It's another edition of Time About the Movies, and today we're taking a look at the movies of May 13th, 1994. Now, last time around I said we had five movies to look at. Turns out there were six because I saw another movie on there that was not in the previous two weeks. Apparently this was the third week and it came out. It got a huge wider release. We'll delve into that one when we get to it, but... Uh, Let's start off by looking at the biggest new release of the weekend, and that is the late Brandon Lee starring in The Crow. Devil's Night is upon us again. A little party, start a bunch of fires, make a little profit. So something that you'll notice on here that I didn't notice until I looked at the credits, Al Franken of Saturday Night Live co-wrote this movie, and I I thought that was pretty interesting because I've seen this movie before, and I never put it together that he was one of the co-writers on this movie. And um, like I said, the mo I've seen this movie before, and I gotta say, the movie is a really solid film. It's a movie about this couple who has this, this great life, their family life is going good, and then... Uh, Meg Ryan's character ends up going back into her alcohol, is getting back into alcoholism, and she's had this drinking problem for the longest time, and she's been able to let it. She's been able to keep it from keep, keep it from disrupting her family, but then it comes to the point where it comes back in, and so the movie becomes kind of this thing of how do you keep this family together while also trying to keep these these deep these deep uh, things going on in your life from ruining it, and. Um, it's a pretty good movie. It's a movie that easily could have gone into predictable territory, cliche territory, but it really doesn't do that. It's a movie that really does work all the way through. I think Andy Garcia and Meg Ryan are great playing the couple in this, and the the family that they have is very good. Um, a lot of great performances overall in here. You got them, Lauren Tom, Philip Seymour Hoffman, Ellen Burstyn is also in the movie. It's a really good movie. It's a really well-made film. It doesn't make this when the emotional moments happen in this movie, they are very well earned. They aren't moments that feel like they're being manipulated on you, they aren't moments that feel like they're being forced onto you, like you it's like to get something out of you. They are they all feel very genuine, and it does feel very good to see these to see a, a movie like this if you're going through a lot of the same issues that the characters are going through in this movie. It's a very well made film, fantastic film overall. I really enjoyed it. It was one of the big surprises that I ever saw with, in terms of these movies from the, from back in the past. It's a movie that really is very well enjoyable. I can't recommend it enough. When a man loves a woman, go check it out. So, uh, with that said, now let's move on to the next movie, and that is Spike Lee's Crooklyn. <laughs> Extraordinary love. My wife is the most amazing woman. She's got 600 different kinds of smiles. And they can light you up. They can make you laugh out loud. And they can make you cry just like that. That grew into a beautiful family. This is you. Not inside the dress, inside the body. How did I get in there? That's a whole other set of videos. <laughs> what if it was better than you ever dreamed it could be? 
Hey, am I gonna like this? And what if it wasn't as perfect as it seemed? We should do this much more often because we can afford this. Not unless they cop the tricks. What's that supposed to mean? Bringing you out at the end of an evening is not as fun as it used to be. What happened? I went for a drink. Thought you quit. I did. You don't know what I go through. You don't have a clue. How come we haven't talked about this? How come we haven't talked about a lot of things? What I do now. You think this is about you? My wife hurts. I need to say what's wrong, honey. Michael, I am just hanging on here. What is wrong with our home? Is it the couch? Is it the area around who could possibly be me? It's not your problem. No, it's not my problem. It's just my fault. I am not your problem to solve. What would you do? I messed up, baby. But I'm fighting my way back. And what would you give to get it back? I tried everything. I am so scared that you don't know how much I love you. Touchstone Pictures presents Andy Garcia and Meg Ryan. I love you. When a man loves a woman. So something that you'll notice on here that I didn't notice until I looked at the credits, Al Franken of Saturday Night Live co-wrote this movie, and I I thought that was pretty interesting because I've seen this movie before, and I never put it together that he was one of the co-writers on this movie. And um, like I said, the mo I've seen this movie before, and I gotta say, the movie is a really solid film. It's a movie about this couple who has this this great life, their family life is going good, and then... Uh, Meg Ryan's character ends up going back into her alcohol, is getting back into alcoholism, and she's had this drinking problem for the longest time, and she's been able to let it. She's been able to keep it from keep, keep it from disrupting her family, but then it comes to the point where it comes back in, and so the movie becomes kind of this thing of how do you keep this family together while also trying to keep these these deep these deep uh, things going on in your life from ruining it, and. Um, it's a pretty good movie. It's a movie that easily could have gone into predictable territory, cliche territory, but it really doesn't do that. It's a movie that really does work all the way through. I think Andy Garcia and Meg Ryan are great playing the couple in this, and the the family that they have is very good. Um, a lot of great performances overall in here. You got them, Lauren Tom, Philip Seymour Hoffman, Ellen Burstyn is also in the movie. It's a really good movie. It's a really well-made film. It doesn't make, when the emotional moments happen in this movie, they are very well earned. They aren't moments that feel like they're being manipulated on you. They aren't moments that feel like they're being forced onto you, like you, it's like to get something out of you. They are, they all feel very genuine, and it does feel very good to see these, to see a, a movie like this, if you're going through a lot of the same issues that the characters are going through in this movie. It's a very well made film, fantastic film overall. I really enjoyed it. It was one of the big surprises that I ever saw with, in terms of these movies from the from back in the past. It's a movie that really is very well enjoyable. I can't recommend it enough. When a man loves a woman, go check it out. So, uh, with that said, now let's move on to the next movie, and that is Spike Lee's Crooklyn. Sorry, why? Sorry, I called your mother a hawk. And you sorry about teasing me about being left back three times, about being on welfare, about me and my brothers having three different fathers. All right, already. I said I was sorry. This time, Spike Lee takes a whole new look at growing up in his old neighborhood. Is the TV on? No! I'm crazy because I got five of y'all. Run me, stark raving mad. Somebody left the toilet seat up. I almost fell in again. Shut up, you flat chested witch. Why am I gonna eat this? Black eyed peas have calcium. All the calcium in the world ain't gonna make up for this nasty taste. Can I have some tricks? No, please. Say no, you idiot. Do it You know, Daddy doesn't want to fight and yell. Yeah, all Daddy wants to do is play his music in a place called Crooklyn. All it took to keep it together was a little love, peace, and soul. Alfre Woodard, Delroy Lindo, and introducing Zelda Harris. That's what family's for. Gotta stick together, right? Right. Brooklyn, a Spike Lee joint. As I've talked about before, I am a very big Spike Lee fan, and um, 
Crooklyn was one of his movies that I got to very late on. I heard a lot of mixed things about it. Most notably that this was sort of the beginning of somewhat of a creative low with Lee after a lot of his first films turned out to be really good. Uh, most, uh, I will agree that Crooklyn is kind of the lower end of these good, not great movies, but it's not a terrible movie by any means. It doesn't. It just doesn't really have a whole lot of story to tell. I think what really sticks out about this movie are the performances. I mean, you put Alfie Woodard and Delroy Lindo in anything, and they can usually up the quality of a movie big time. Uh, you got this young actress, Zelda Harris, who would later go on to star in The Babysitter's Club. Uh, she's very good in the movie, and then she'd later retain with Spike Lee again for He Got Game, which came out a few years later. Um, the movie overall is very good. It's, an, it's a good movie. It's an enjoyable film. There are a lot of elements to enjoy about it, largely in the performances. I think the story is a little too all over the place to fully appreciate the film's purpose. And, like I said, it's not a terrible movie, but it's nowhere near up to the levels that Spike Lee had up to this point. I mean, he makes Do the Right Thing, Malcolm X, Jungle Fever, these great movies that have stood the test of time. And this movie doesn't have that same lasting power, but I still enjoyed it for what it was. It's not one of Spike Lee's best movies I can recommend to people. But if you like his filmography, this is something that's good for a one-time watch. Maybe not something you'd want to watch over and over again, but I'm glad I saw it. I think it could have been a whole lot better, but as it is, it's perfectly fine for what it is. So uh, That's Crooklyn. Now let's move on to the next movie, which is, if I can get it right here, uh, Paul Rodriguez starring in A Million to One. Imagine. Oranges! One day, you're scraping to get by. I got a dollar sixty cents. Uh... No credit, though. Icky credit. Kakuna Kukupa. Don't even ask. If I don't get a job, I don't know what I'm gonna do. El Rento es duo. <laughs> and the next. Gorgeous. You've got a million dollars in your pocket. How many zeros in a million? Four? Six. Mm, it's a million. How many L's in a million? Four? Two. It's a million dollar check. I know. If it's real, I'll buy you lunch. What would you do? Find myself the most incredible bike in the entire world. How would it change your life? Now, which one of you has the phones? I have fun. We all have fun. Yeah, we have a lot of fun. I'm well, very happy for you, but uh, who has the uh, moolah? What? What do you want more than anything else in the world? A green card? For one, it changed everything. Come and get it, Ma. Now, what do you think? Should I or shouldn't I? I think Mr. Lopez is a man of integrity. Because the funniest thing about money... I show it to people and they give me things. ...is how people react to it. Mr. Lopez, I have my daughter. I want you to meet her. She's the world's best cook. Half of that check is my Senor Lopez! Shouldn't you just be getting ready to go to work? What work? We're rich now. Uh, honestly, Paul Rodriguez is kind of a mixed bag for me. Sometimes he can be really funny, but... Most of the time, I haven't seen anything that made me say, this guy truly is a great, great talent, and um, uh, this movie put, doesn't really help it either. I don't think this, I think the movie is trying its best to be a modern take of this Mark Twain story, uh, The Million Pound Knows, what it was called, but I don't know. It feels a little too direct-to-video-ish for its own good. I'm actually surprised it actually got a theatrical release, because... It really doesn't feel like a movie that should have gone to theaters. It looks like a movie that should have gone straight to video or on television. But, um, I mean, I can't say it's one of the worst things I've ever seen, but it's certainly not something I'm going to remember after watching it. So, uh, that's a million to one. Let's move on to the next movie, and that is Widow's Peak. It was a lovely little town. Hello! A town where ladies were happy. With the lives they led. Ladies, are you coming in on Ramsha? Because most of their men were dead. <laughs> Widow's Peak was a place of peace and quiet. <laughs> oh, Mrs. Lee is saying no getting more of it. A friendly place where life was good. Until one day, a new widow came to town. What brought a beautiful woman like you to maybe end up on Widow's Peak? When we're better acquainted. She wasn't old. How ravishing she looks. She wasn't shy. I'll take that if you please. You will not. Finally, let go. Kevin, give no. it to her. And maybe she wasn't what they thought she was. It's a secret about her, would you say? I'm talking about her. About her not being what she pretends to be. Between ourselves and these four walls, what did you do to her? She started it. What began as a quarrel is turning into a skeptic. What does she know? There's nothing. She's up to murder. Mia Farrow. 
And look at the commotion I've walked into. Joan Plowright. God, gee, stupid child, put the brakes on. <laughs> and Natasha Richardson. Don't tell me you want a favor in return. Nothing of a disgusting nature. Widow's Peak. It's not a who done it. He said you could do more tricks than a conjurer. <laughs> it's a who did it. With who? Now, what did he mean by that? I haven't really seen this one, so I can't really comment on it too much. But um, it looks like it could be. Pr it looks like it could be pretty funny. It's a movie that feels like, kind of like has a Knives Out type of vibe to it. And like, it's not the typical type of comedy. It's one of those comedies where you got to really pay attention to what's going on to really understand a lot of the humor in there. And um, good cast overall: Mia Farrow, Joan Plowright, Natasha Richardson, Jim Broadbent, and. Um, I mean, it could be, could, could be decent, but uh, it's not something I'm going to rush out to see right away. Just acknowledging that came out this weekend, so... Um, quick one on that one, Widow's Peak. Uh, let's get on to the last movie, and that is Sissy Spacek in Trading Mom. Did you ever make a wish? Did you ever have a dream? Imagine having the magic to make your wishes come true. Mom, will you buy me a tent for my birthday? Oh, by the way, I'm going to the mall after school with Aaron. <laughs> No, you're not. Now, guys, I love you to bits, but I'm sick and tired of this. If I come home and I'm in this house, is not clean. Nobody is going out this weekend, and I mean it. Don't you wish we had one of those muggers who did everything for you? Now, with a little help from a magic friend. Do you just do some magic to make people disappear? They just might get what they want. That she's gone. Their problems have just begun. We want a new mother, not no mother. And then you could go to the mommy market and pick out a new mother. Welcome to the mommy market. We've got them all here. Freya's mother can teach you how to take care of yourself. She's taken. Should they choose one with lots of money? Well, we get to win, miss. Oh, surely you did not expect us to take the bus. Full of energy. She's awesome. She's everything we can want in a mother. We are going camping today. Now I gotta go number two. Leave. Another movie, kind of like a million to one, that feels like a direct-to-video movie blown up for the big screen. Except in this case, it's Sissy Spacek who won an Oscar for Coal Miner's Daughter. And um, in the 14 years since then, this is what it, this is what amounts to it on the big screen, I guess. But um, I don't know. Just this idea, just it could work under better writers. It could work under a better situation. But I don't know. Making Sissy Space, yeah, making Sissy Space like all the moms in this movie, uh, it doesn't really amount to anything. She's not really that great of a person that can play multiple characters in one movie. I mean, she's a great actress, but. You're asking her to play multiple characters in different in these different roles, and sometimes it works, and not sometimes that can work, but other times it doesn't. This is one of those times where it doesn't really work. It's a movie that really is trying a little too hard. It's a little bit corny at times, and the jokes just aren't there. It's just not a funny movie whatsoever. It's a movie that's instantly forgettable, and by that trailer you could definitely see why it's instantly forgettable. So anyway, that's Trading Mom. And so on that note, we wrap up another edition of Time About the Movies. The next time we meet, we'll finally jump into the 1994 summer movie season, which begins with Mel Gibson, Jodie Foster, and James Garner in Richard Donner's adaptation of Maverick. And we also have Gus Van Sant's Even Cowgirls Get the Blues. So two movies to look at next time around. We'll do that on the next episode. But until then, thank you very much for watching. And if you want to see more videos like this, please hit the playlist on the next page. Check out the previous episode. And I will see you guys tomorrow for another episode. So thank you for watching. I'll see you next time, and until then, as always, take care.